I mean that. It's so good to see your faces and be together. It really is. The last time that we met as a congregation together, same place, same time, was before Holy Week. We missed all of the beautiful things that we remember about Jesus dying, rising again, and so... Because we missed Easter, 
um, we're, we're going to have a moment of Easter right now. We have overcome. We have resurrected. And so in honor of, of uh, resurrection, you're going to say with me in a moment, Jesus is alive. On three. Ready? Well, now, this means gusto. One, two, three. Jesus is alive. Let's celebrate his resurrection. Uh, I do want to share with you that um, we are developing new skills. Um, I'm not ready to call myself a tele-evangelist yet. I still have more training to do. But I am more comfortable with videotaping than I was the first time uh, we did that a few months ago and when it was in my family room. And uh, I'm forever grateful for Nick Shirk. He just understands technology in a way that many of us don't. And Sherry Ringer, who has worked very faithfully. And Kelsey Weber, who has been a bridge so often for sacrificing their time to improve our technology skills to serve you. That's wonderful. I also want you to know what a privilege it has been to partner with Denny Soul from Walkerton and Jody Fights from Maple Grove. And you all know that they are part of us that have been released to serve God at Walkerton and at Maple Grove. And also Scott Kaser. Um, and at first you might have wondered, well, Scott's doing a lot of, of, a lot of things here. Well, um, he is, and we're very, very grateful for his participation and help as well. With that, I've gotten a lot of affirming comments about our, our attempts to, uh, to improve in, in videotaping, that kind of thing. We would videotape on Friday afternoons, and then it would be released Sunday morning. And as a matter of fact, this Friday, we videotaped um, and it's being released this morning as, as well. And so you can go home and you can watch another Lakeville United Methodist Church service. Um, you'll want to do that. We've got a very um, lively interview um, in, in the f Friday videotaping. Um, and and uh, it involves memories and it includes um, Kathy Jaworski Denny Soul and Anita White thinking about memories. And so you might want to want to check that out um, later. Also, there have been other things happening, some Zoom meetings and things like that. And we're learning new things with that as well. And one of the things has been our staff parish has been very busy. And you know, perhaps, that we have a new pastor coming. Um, Reverend Larry Chrisman um, will, will be coming, and our staff parish has been working with our, our conference uh, about that. We're looking forward to that and excited. Anita and I um, just last week went down to Greentown and, and met a few people there, so it's, it's happening. We're packing boxes and everything. Well, not only has staff parish dealt with... Um, with a new pastor coming in, but also we had, we had a special meeting. And so I'm gonna invite uh, Larry, our staff parish chairperson, and Scott Kaser to come forward, and they'll bring you up to date. Oh, um, yeah, right here. Just a week ago, just a week ago Wednesday, Staff Parish had the distinct pleasure and honor of interviewing Scott Kaser here for recommending him to the ministry. Scott has felt this calling for quite some time. Scott came to us and gave us his uh, testimony of what he is feeling and our staff parish committee unanimously has recommended Scott to the conference for beginning his journey to becoming a minister 
of the United Methodist Church. Uh, I emailed to the district, Sunita Maiko and a few others, I cc'd, of our unanimous recommendation. Within a few hours, I got an email back that said, please have Scott get in touch with me. This wasn't, this was uh, not Sunita, but one of his assistants. Well, it was, actually it wasn't Vicky, it was, um, no, it was a gentleman there. I, I can't remember the names. I'm so good at remembering names. But anyway, the gentleman emailed me back and said, please have Scott get in touch with me. So I forwarded Scott his email and his phone number. And I'm going to give this microphone to Scott because he has an exciting announcement to give. Thank you, Larry. <clears throat> As you are aware, um, the uh, staff parish did recommend me, um, and it wasn't a short time later I was offered the ability to go interview at a church. Um, South Lawn United Methodist Church is in need of a pastor, um, so I went and interviewed there, and Roger's here this morning to, uh, to witness that. Um, I will be becoming the pastor there uh, starting July 1st. Um, so... And this is kind of on my heart a little bit as I was sitting in the pew. One of the things that I think that all of us need to keep in mind is that our journey, our spiritual journey, is different for everybody. <clears throat> so that's, that's something that's important to just to get, get a handle on that. My spiritual journey has taken me to the pulpit. I don't know why, other than I've been reaffirmed a few times that I do speak well and I do offer great messages. But... I'm not sure that that's enough, but we'll see. I can speak well. I've been in training a long time. God's worked on me for uh, about 49 years, coming on 50 real quick. <clears throat> and all of this journey has taken me to this point. And one of the things that, I, that just kind of plays in my mind this whole time, I went to the Lay Academy uh, back in the February of this year, and the very first phrase I heard on the very first Saturday of our training was, get out of the boat. That spoke to me. That told me that it's time. Now, those things just don't happen by sheer accident. So I'm no longer afraid to step out of the boat. I read somewhere that it says, have no fear because I am with you. I have no fear. I will take this journey. And I will follow it to the end. I thank my church family for supporting me, giving me opportunities. And I thank Brian greatly for mentoring me and helping me through this process. Thank you very much. You're here at a historic day. Woo! <laughs> Isn't that great? Praise God. Praise God. Uh, I, I do have one more thing to say. The, the Walkerton Church and the, um, and, and the Maple Grove Church are still going to do videotaping together. But I'm stepping away uh, from that personally. And I think Scott may be helping them still. Um, but anyhow, uh, I do want to share that. Scott, we, we love you and appreciate you. And what a privilege to release someone. Not that, that they quit our church, but that they are released from our church to serve. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for what you're doing in Scott's life. And God, you don't call all of us to be pastors, but you do call each of us to have a willing heart to do what the Holy Spirit says is next. Help us today to take those next steps. And thank you for a new day. We're going to um, listen to the hymn, Morning Has Broken. They're asking that we not sing out because of germs 
and that kind of thing. So I know that feels awkward, but let's worship the Lord as we um, hear morning is broken. Thank you. I want to declare this church right now during this COVID season a no shame zone. All of us have different views about how free we should be, how responsible we should be, and I don't think we have to have the same view in order to get along. And so regardless of what your personal decision is about coming to church or watching it on video, we respect that during this season. We understand. All of us, because of our life situation, have a responsibility to determine what risks we're going to take and that kind of thing. Now, within that freedom and within that choice, there are parameters, and I want to share some of them. Obviously, if you're sick, if you're coughing, if you have a fever, if you may have symptoms for COVID, guess where we want you to be? Not here. Okay? Just be clear on that. Naturally, there are people who are older who have health conditions, and if they need to hear from their pastor, it's okay for you not to come to church? I'm telling you now, it's okay for you to stay home. You're not a bad Christian because you determined to worship Christ at home. Um, we understand you have, you have that. And those of us who choose to come and we've been longing to be together and we've really missed it, we, I've got to remind you, do no harm is part of John Wesley's rule. And that means that while we're here, as much as is practical and possible, we want you to follow the COVID restrictions that our governor has put into place. Uh, let's not let our enthusiasm for being together trample on other people's freedoms and health. So I want to hug you, and I'm not going to as an act of compassion. All right? And you probably weren't wanting a hug from me anyhow. <laughs> so I'm thrilled to worship God. And we will worship God together. And uh, we are, are looking forward to that. I am going to, uh, I'm going to pray. And at the end of my prayer, you children are, are welcome to leave the sanctuary. And I think Carlene is going to have, have something for you. But let's pray first. God of all creation, we're so grateful to gather together as a church family, some on their couches and some in the pew. We don't take for granted the luxury and the privilege and the benefits of togetherness. Thank you both for the physical experience of worship and the reminder that we worship in spirit and in truth even when we're not in the same place at the same time. We're able to be one and in harmony with the assembly of believers. 
Today we take time to thank you for our military, each sacrifice, especially those who have lost their lives, and we ask that you be with their families at this time. Thank you for the freedom we have because of such sacrifices. And Lord, we do not take Jesus' sacrifice for granted either. May our function of remembering be honored today. May we present our past, this present moment, and our future to you so that your grace and protection will be active now and tomorrow as well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, children, you may leave, and I'm going to ask everyone else to stand as we have Hank Weber uh, read a scripture as a call to worship. Be reading from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, and this is written, some, most think by Jeremiah, some discussion about that, but anyway, this is after the siege and, and destruction of Jerusalem back in uh, ancient Israel. And he's reflecting the, the grief of the people. I remember my affliction in my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet I call to mine, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. Now we'll listen as Kathy plays, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Today we're going to remember God is faithful. Remember. Memory. Memory is powerful. Memory brings the past or a past experience and doesn't leave it there. When we remember something, we bring an experience in our past into our moment today. So memory is a function of the mind, but it's not just a function of the past. It's an experience of linking the past to the moment, to the present. It, it's about life. It's about how our history and our destiny come together. So we're going to honor memory. Memory and faith that God can help us in the future are meant to go together. We, memory gives us a perspective. Memory is a tool of the Holy Spirit to create even better memories as we grow based on what we have learned in the faith. So that's a pretty powerful thing to remember. And we're going to prepare for prayer right now. And, and I'd like you to take a moment to reflect and remember a few people that enrich your life and you thank God for them. So, if you have served our country in the military, would you please stand? Praise God. Thank you. Lord, we remember with gratitude the gift that those who have served our country, those who can't stand because they've sacrificed their life for us. Thank you, Lord, for these people. And thank you for the freedoms we enjoy because they gave up their enjoyment for a season of life. In your name we pray, amen. I want you to remember somebody who has welcomed you into the family of God. Maybe they introduced you to the grace of Christ, the love of Christ. Maybe it was a parent. Maybe it was a Sunday school teacher. Maybe it was somebody at work. Pause for a moment and think of who has invested in your spiritual journey and say thank you to God. And now I want you to think of who is, is in your life that may be thanking God for your influence. Who's looking to you? Who are you a role model for? As that person comes to mind, maybe you'll want to invest more intentionally into their lives. Thank God for someone who you're able to influence today. Lord, I thank you for those who have served you by following the lead of Jesus Christ. Thank you for those who encourage us, instruct us, who awaken the mysteries of grace. Thank you, God, for those who challenge us to be discerning about what is best and the wisdom of following God, even though, though we don't know where that may lead. Help us to be that person in the lives of some of our young people who are searching for faith or who are weak or who are new to this Christian thing. And Lord, there are those who are isolated, detached, experiencing extreme loneliness during this season of COVID. Help them to remember your promise to be present with them, available, welcoming them with open arms, providing grace and peace and restoration. Lord, as a congregation, we ask that you help Jim Fenstermacher and his family as they remember Arlene and as we do too. We ask that you will be with Varmel Sykes as she's preparing to have surgery soon and with Brandy as she 
Brandy Shirk as she recovers from surgery. And Lord, last night there were, were people experiencing outages and storm damage, and we ask that you lift them as well. And God, because we can, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to preach, and I'm going to ask you to remember to remember, and remember to forget. Well, Anita and I are going through the memory banks of our experience here at Lakeville United Methodist Church for the past decade. Uh, That's a lot of memories. It's a lot of wonderful times, a lot of joy. Um, A lot of haircuts. (laughs) It's wonderful. It really is. And and I want you all to know that um, I'm just so delighted that we're we're leaving. We're moving to be close to grandkids, not because we can't stand you. (laughs) Uh, We're going to be making new memories in a new place at Greentown, at the First United Methodist Church there, but what will happen never takes away what has happened. And in Philippians chapter 1, verse 3, the Apostle Paul reminds his friends at Philippi how his memories of them and his gratitude for them are connected. He says, when I pray, I can't help but saying thank you. And uh, I want to say the same thing when I think of you when I pray for you, it's prayers of gratitude. And that's just a beautiful thing. Um, Our relationship is about to change. I am a pastor. I will not be your pastor. And the reason is because you will have a new pastor. I can still be your friend and I can care and we can have those heart strengths. But you've got someone brand new coming in who is going to need to make those connections with you. So I'm going to ask that you not turn for me to me in the future when I move for advice and things that you would turn to your pastor for. Because only that way are you able to build those affection bonds with your new pastor. I'm not being mean or anything. I can try. (laughs) It's not. It's just the way it's just the way it is. That doesn't negate our relationship, but it affirms God's plan for What's coming up? Well, as a Christian, you are called to remember. It's part of the task of Christianity. And we are reminded to remember because we humans tend to forget. And I think that kind of increases as you get a little older, by the way. I find out that when I'm hurried, when I'm preoccupied, when I'm busy, when I'm stressed, when I'm overloaded, that's when I am at most risk of forgetting. Forgetfulness can be a bad thing. So when I had four children in Catskill, New York, and 
I was the pastor and I had part-time jobs and I was overwhelmed all the time and everything. I loved it there, but wouldn't you know it, the school system got restructured. When we first moved to Catskill, we had a neighborhood school. It was Grandview School and uh, my kids could walk to school, you know? And then they had Grandview for certain grades and Irving for certain grades and kindergarten was at another place. And I had four children and one year, I had, because of the spacing of my children, I had one child in four different school buildings. And it was like, wow, this is crazy to remember. Who do I pick up? Where do I pick them up? What, what's going on? Well, I, rem I don't remember which child it was, but one of my kids had a parent-teacher conference, and, and sometimes um, Kaneta and I would go together, but often she babysat, and so often I would be the designated parent to go to parent-teacher conferences. And so I went to Grandview School to, um, to the classroom for the parent-teacher conference, and it was a wrong school. <laughs> I missed my appointment. I didn't forget that there was a parent-teacher conference. I forgot which kid it was at which school. So I want you to know I have a memory problem. Is that news? <laughs> but guess what? With all joy, I'm telling you, God does not have a memory problem. God remembers. He's never tired or preoccupied. He never takes something for granted that he should cherish. He is always faithful. Great is his faithfulness to remember what he has promised to fulfill that. And I am having Hank read a few verses to assure us that God's memory is astute. God reminds us in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 15, that he, the Lord, remembers his covenant forever. The word he commanded for a thousand generations. And God, through Isaiah chapter 49, 15 to 16, says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion for the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. So I see I have engraved you on the palm of my hand. And no longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will know me from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. It says Hebrews 8.12 as he quotes Jeremiah 31.34. So God remembers. God remembers you. You are not forgotten. God is faithful. How wonderful is that? And as we follow God to become more like God, we too will be like him in remembering the things we should remember. And because of that, God holds us accountable to remember the past experiences and encounters and events that we have had where God spoke to us where God provided for us, where God corrected us, where God blessed us, that these things are not just meant to be part of our past, but they're meant to impact us today. And Isaiah chapter 45 says, remember this, fix it in your mind, take it to heart, you rebels. Remember the former things, foes of long ago, I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Have you learned the difference between God with a capital G and the things in life that we call God or that are first priorities that shouldn't be? 
remember there's only one God. It's not money, it's not popularity, it's not fame, it's not shiny. One God. Remember that. And then Moses. Moses gets very practical. Moses is a realist. And and, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, and by the way, um, Scott read from more than just this passage um, in, in our Friday taping. It says, make sure you don't forget God. Make sure you don't forget God. Make sure when you eat and are satisfied and you've built pleasant houses to settle in, make sure you don't become so full of yourself and your things that you forget God, your God. The God, remember? Remember the God who delivered you from Egyptian slavery? The God who led you through that huge and fearsome wilderness? If you start thinking, and and here's where your memory lapses, If you start thinking to yourself, I did all this, and by myself I am rich, it's mine. That's just not the way it was. Think again. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all his, this wealth, and so that, as to confirm his covenant that he promised to your ancestors. Ancestors. So, I want you to intentionally take time today, maybe right now, to think back in your memory banks to when God delivered you, like he delivered the Egyptians from slavery as part of their national historic uh, experience. When did he provide for you in the wilderness when there wasn't anything, and yet you trusted him and Somehow some loving person helped you out or something. I want you to remember that when, when God blessed you, gave you a promotion, helped you to overcome an illness, how did he bless you? How did he confirm his faithfulness to you in your past? John fourteen six tells us that the Holy Spirit functions as a memory prod. It goes like this. Jesus says to his disciples just shortly before he's going to die, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I said. The Holy Spirit will remind you of the words of Christ. And you know what? Communion is all about memory. Communion is a time to intentionally exercise remembering what Jesus has done for us. Jesus sacrifices his life, and as the bread is broken and the cup is offered, Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Let's not take Jesus' sacrifice for granted. Um, there is a, a, there's a part in Matthew that we so often don't return, we, we don't really focus on. And, and I think it is so powerful. It starts out in Matthew chapter 14. And we read in Matthew 14 that Jesus was doing miracles and teachings and 5,000 people plus, 5,000 men plus women and children on top of that, All were just not wanting to leave because of the glow of being with Jesus, but they were hungry. And so out of five loaves and two fish and a grateful spirit, Jesus fed 5,000 people. What a memory. Wow, I was there when 5,000 people were fed with very little. Well, In the next chapter, chapter 15, there's a similar story. Jesus had 4,000 people gathered, and they had been there for three days, and whatever lunch they had was gone. 
And this time they gathered seven loaves and a few small fish. And again, the second time, everyone had enough because God did this miracle. But then in chapter 16, so we've got chapter 14, chapter 15, and chapter 16, in their hurry, the disciples forgot the bread on the other side of, what was it, the Sea of Galilee or something. And now they get over here and they realize, oh no, we, we left the carryout from Culver's behind. <laughs> And now they're all weirded out. Oh no, what are we going to say to Jesus? We forgot the bread. And Jesus says this. You of little faith, why are you talking among yourselves that you have no bread? Don't you understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for 5,000 how many basketfuls you gathered? Or seven loaves for 4,000. And how many basketfuls were left behind? You see, when God does something special, sacred, miraculous, we're to grow in our faith so that next time we're in a similar situation, we saw God was faithful and now we can trust him again. But when we don't remember what God has done. It's like we've got to start all over again. And our faith doesn't grow. So we need to be disciplined to remember what God has done already for us so that when we face a new situation and new obstacles or barriers, we can anticipate God's character, doing it, repeating it again because we're his children. And he's our father. So I don't know what specifically you're in jeopardy of forgetting that you should remember. Think about that. When was God tender? When was he intimate? When did he provide in an extraordinary way in the past? If you called this to mind, it will help you today. So remember that. Now, I'm going to just take a moment to say God does want you to forget some things. We need to remember to forget. Boy, that's hard sometimes. It really is. Forget to be bitter. Forget to be jealous. Forget to hold a grudge. Forget your past achievements, which make you boast like you're better than anybody else. Forget that. Live in the moment. Practice grace. Extend mercy. Offer forgiveness and you will grow in your spiritual relationship with God. There's a poem and it's called Reflections by Florence White Willett. And it goes like this. I thank God for the bitter things. They've been a friend to grace. They've driven me from the paths of ease to storm the secret place. I thank him for the friends who failed to fulfill my heart's deep need. They've driven me to the Savior's feet upon his love to feed. I'm grateful too through all life's way no one can satisfy and so I found in God alone my rich and full supply. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? The great apostle Paul has to intentionally remind himself to forget the past so that his mind can be occupied with what God's going to do next. It goes like this, and this is what I ask of you, and this is what God asks of me. The Apostle Paul says with great force, and and by the way, um, um, at the end of his life, he says, I fought the good fight and I've kept the faith. Well, this is similar to that. He goes, but this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press toward the goal 
the destiny, the end, the completion. I press toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me homeward, heavenward in Christ Jesus. So be intentional, be disciplined in remembering God's great faithfulness. And that will give you the freedom to forget yesterday's failures and yesterday's glory days. And we can use our memories as a springboard to a deeper and more full future as what God has done for us in the past will serve our efforts in the future. So don't think of memory as a thing of the past. Think of it as being connected to the present and the future. Let us pray. God of our memories and Lord of our growth, may we say yes to remember the ways in which you have sacrificed for our benefit and your presence in our lives have impacted the growth of our faith and help us to discipline our memories in order to trust you more deeply and fully. And for those things that are so hard to forget, that should and must be left behind, give us the courage of your presence so that in leaving them behind, we become more like Jesus Christ. And in a moment, our acolyte is going to come. I'm going to say the benediction, and she's going to um, bring the light of Christ from the sanctuary to the world just as we do. And um, so please um, stay in your seat until she has um, gotten past your pew. And as you leave, remember to um, put your masks on and in the, in the hallway where you're overlapping with each other. Um, please be cordial, but uh, just, just remember the social distancing. Now... Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26, probably my favorite benediction in all of the Bible. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show his favor and give you peace. <laughs>